let the case. Continue now. It will continue to the up to eleven o'clock. So let us we discuss at this. Jail Sorma, please. So he is the intervention cardiologist from the National Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases. At his own institute, he is the director of his own institute at Jaipur. Dr. Sorma, please. Uh, I audible. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Paja, and for inviting me. And my is not a case. It is a difficult situation to that and how we are going uh, getting out of this. These are difficult radial anatomy in complex uh, cases. So I am going into for next uh, couple of minutes about this. The lessons, uh, vascular access go, for and go, go to the go to the slide show, sir. This is slide show. at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In 1962, Sir Ricketts and Abram performed the first percutaneous transfemoral approach. In 67, Jadkins developed specialized catheters to simplify the technique. After this, the upper limb were abandoned in favor of the simpler transfemoral approach. Again, in 1989, Dr. Kemp from the Canada. Uh, he described uh, using the transradial approach. The technique was perfected by Kamenich in 1993 by uh, performing the PTCA. So, the friends, these are the vascular access site for endovascular procedures. Uh, as we know, radial, brachial, and femoral, only three access are there. This is the first original study of coronary angiography from the upper limb. It was published in 1989 by Kempu. It is the first uh, landmark study, and uh, after that, he Stopped doing the upper limb uh, uh, procedure. Then again, Kamenich, who uh, brought up this technique by doing angioplasty through the upper limb by radial, and he published in the CCVI in 1993. His three original cases. Then, what are the difficult? Uh, what are the radial approach advantage? Because we everybody is knowing there is no bleeding vascular complications in femoral. There are the eight to ten percent complications occurs. Patient lying there, and there may be in form of the Vascular hematoma, pseudo aneurysm, and a uh, lot of other things. Uh, early embolism patient can embolize after half an hour uh, while doing the radial approach. Patient is comfortable mentally when doing the radial approach. Patient is feeling better mentally. Back pain is zero percent in the radial as compared to the femoral. And uh, while walking, there is no difficulty in working by the upper arm procedures as compared to the lower arm procedures. So this was a landmark study in SCS patients. This is an excess study, quite long, published in '96. This this compared with the radial, brachial, and femoral. You see the bleeding vascular complication 2.3 in the radial, brachial, and femoral. It is zero percent in the radial. Success it was lower, but today it is success in 98 to 99 percent by the all the uh, radial as well as brachial. It was stay in one 1.5 days here in radial as compared to the longer stay in femoral and brachial. And time it was longer in 96, but I am sure now the procedure is quicker in the radial uh, as compared to the femoral. And floor times is, is comparable. So, friends, why radial? Look at the anatomy. Anatomical features the flat bony prominence of the radius because it is easy to compression when we are removing the C through the radial. Collateralization of the radial artery because we are having the superficial and deep palmar arch. There is a there is a less possibility of the ischemia if our radial is occluded. People, uh, surgeons are they taking the left radial and there is no ischemia, but there are chances of 1% uh, radial occlusion when we are using the multiple punctures and large seats and there is a mismatch in the radial and seat. Puncture not over the joint. This is a very, very important thing. When we are puncturing the radial, it should be just above the styloid process. It should not be at the, at the uh, uh, junction. Motion doesn't increase the risk. No major adjustment ad 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 now at, at this point of the radial puncture. So this is the advantage you see here. This is a radial artery and it is the superficial and deep palmar arch. You can see there is vein adjacent to this. This is an important slide. You can palpate this radial artery by three fingers and uh, fix it. And uh, when you are getting the maximum pulsation, you have to uh, puncture it. This is the exact puncture site, not here at the, at the joint because this is a styloid process. And this is a flat bony prominence at the head of the radius. You have to puncture by 30 to 45 degrees. Technique which we are always using it. 
this is the most common mistakes which we our younger cardiologist enthusiasts they are making they are puncturing the radial artery at the joints so there may be chances of the hem arthrosis more uh, hematoma more uh, pain at the at the at the puncture sites so this mistake should be avoided when we are palpating our radial artery before puncturing it so the learning curve trans uh, there the what the exercise radial uh, there the problems radial artery spasm anatomical variation may be there and traversing through the supply vein there may be the problem uh, and what problems what solutions we can have and catheter control and backup so this is learning curve when we are you are doing the 80 uh, first 80 patients and when you are crossing the 80 patients excess failure is 14% it was older data but i don't think in first 80 patients when our younger cardiologist it is less than 8 to 10% and more than uh, 80 patient it is less than 1% failure rate and in my practice it is i think uh, i cannot see the pun uh, puncture failure uh, in in this radial era if radial is not palpable and radial is absent then of, of course you have to switch over from that side see in time it is 10 minutes when you, uh, your 80 patients is there and it is, it is 2.8 minutes when you are cross the you cross the 80 uh, 80 patients procedure time in procedure is 25 uh, minutes in the, when you are doing first 80 patients it is 17 minutes after crossing the 7 80 80 patients landmark it was a, a slide by spalding at all this is a various variations uh, in the radial and ulnar anatomy most commonness is the formation by complete arch by the ulnar artery this is a typical radio ulnar communication what we are going to see but other variation i am not going into detail about this so anatomical variants of the radial artery severe torticity it can be happened into 5.2% tri feasible wire advance may be difficult but under fluoro you can advance your uh, guide uh, wire slowly slowly under fluoro guidance your radial artery may be stenosed in 1.7% patient in this that situation also tri is feasible if there is stenosis severe you can use the balloon guided uh, wire crossings or you can uh, dilate the stenosis first and then you can perform the radial artery interventions hypoplasia if ulnar is dominant in 1.7 percent then it is a, a difficult situation if your uh, hypoplastic radial artery then you cannot uh, uh, complete your procedure by the radial but you have to see the alternate process the aberrant radial artery is again the difficult situation the incidence of the aberrant radial artery is in 0.5 percent can be used as an alternative access site when the radial artery at the wrist is small or not palpable these are technical problems when difficult access there what are the solutions often access in the first try first puncture is always better a repeated puncture the success is going to decrease and decrease if spasm occurs then wait before trying again cannulate artery more proximally give nitroglycerin nitroglycerin either iv or you can use the sublingual tablets have the patients open and clean hand use another site if spasm is very severe so trans radial site complications radial artery occlusion may be occur which i was mentioning in, it is less than 1 to 1.5% of patients mid forearm hematoma when we you are we are forcing the our wire blindly and if there is a torticity there is a loop then there may be chances of the mid arm for hematoma this may be by the wire this may be by the seat this may be by the blunt uh, when we are passing our uh, catheter radial artery pseudo aneurysm this is very rare and uh, this this is uh, more common when we are uh, repeated puncturing our radial artery and we are using the mismatch radial artery seat as well as the artery this is a bleeding with the resultant compartment syndrome rarely now we are not seeing this in my practice since last 20 years i have not uh, come across with any compartment syndrome so radial artery occlusion what are the factors this artery size which which i was discussing higher incidence when the artery is smaller especially in the female females heparin doses if it, we are using less than uh, 5000 in our practice we are using 5000 units either in the form of the cocktail or you can give separately through the vein or uh, from other sides artery spas pre treatment with verapamil or diltiazem or nipidipine you can use hemostatic devices the, the minimum compre uh, compression may be uh, done here this is the factors a uh, radial spas this is very painful for the patient you can uh, avoid this and what the risk factor in which subset of patient this this is more common when our patient is anxious female younger patients and especially in smoker you see here smoker patients they are having the more spasm as compared to non smoker this is the similar with the coronary artery disease 
see diameter it is if it is a mismatch then you can have the spasm number of care nowadays we are performing puncturing every alternate day the radial arteries then there may be chances of spasm and the learning curve first 80 cases you may have the more spasm and after 80 you spasm is very less because your procedure is very quick the cocktails different people's different ICs they are using different cocktails before procedure you can use the topical anesthesia cream or the radial artery through the seat which is the usual protocol usual cocktail is 2000 to 5000 units of uh, aparin then verapamil or diltiazem you can use 1% lidocaine if it is there uh, before puncture we are everybody is using and uh, nitroglycerin nowadays you are, we are using nitroglycerin with aparin if diltiazem is not available after procedure and before seat removal if there is a uh, spasm you can give the verapamil 1 mg intravenously also so these are the these are loops and tortuosities. You can see this is the loop. This is the loop. Spas, hematoma, and delayed hematoma may be here. And this loops, how, how you, you can come across this, uh, come over this uh, loops. Never forced. Fluoroscopy guidance is important. And here you are using the hydrophilic wire. An alternate approach should not be hesitant if your wire is not passing and uh, should not be give the any com complications uh, or motto to treat the patient without complications. There are another variations and we are having the uh, this, this various alpha, beta and theta loops and uh, by various maneuvering the catheter we can come uh, come overcome these loops also. And this is you see this is the loop and uh, if there is any resistance dictum of radial artery you have to the fluoro you have to fluoro and you have to the injection and if there is any uh, here in, in this case you see this is the redundant radial artery and in my practice, I'm not doing the heroic. If like such uh, loops is there and artery is redundant, uh, go either to uh, left radial or uh, I'm not hesitant to puncture the femoral also. So this is another uh, loop where we, we can overcome by this thing, uh, guiding wire and advancing the guiding catheter. And then you can full, full finish your uh, procedures of, uh, by doing this uh, uh, radial procedures. Difficult guide wire moments, it can be because of tortuosity, because of the spasm, because of occlusion of radial artery, because multiple punctures you must have made it. And important, if there is a stenosis, then your guiding wire may be giving the problem. Guide wire in the side branch, if you have to check and under, under fluoro, you have to check your guide wire is going straight or it is going to into some uh, tributaries. Abnormal takeoff the radial from the brachial and subintimal position of if you have your undone the dissection that this is very important you you should not force at any time what are the options if you are getting the guide wire moment difficulty then rotate the needle to change angle of bevel perform a radial angiogram use a hydrophilic guide wires try 0.018 PTC guide wire or 0.014 PTC guide wires and give the ample amount of vasodilator by the needle and try again. This is the various loops which we can come across when we are performing the, this thing uh, and you can uh, advance your guiding catheter or the hydrophilic guide wire and uh, you can perform your procedures uh, elegantly. This is the one thing and how do you deal with the tortuosity subclavian? This is the use a balloon or holy wire into the ascending aorta. There is a significant tortuosity in the subclavian artery switched to a stiff accent 0.035 or 0.038 cook or implants wire. Pull the wire into the shaft of the catheter in order to facilitate torquing for the uh, coronary cannulations. This is the common uh, catheter which we are using by the left radial or right radial. I am not going into detail. Uh, workhorse guiding catheter is for left uh, coronary uh, XB or JL or for right we are using the JR or implants. So this uh, when uh, there is a difficulty in the removing seat after spas, what are the options? Give ample amount of vasodilators and pain medication. Sedate your patients and uh, ask the patient to cough. Gently rotate the seat upon the removal and hold the skin distal to the incident to avoid the buckling. So this is the uh, my presentation thank you thank you very much thank you thank you dr sarma for excellent presentation please please wait at least one or two questions to be asked at the end of the session next